let's work at getting our spaceship to fly around. Now to do this, before I do it, I'm going to open my library and I'm going to go down to MC Ship, which is our spaceship, and I'm going to double click on the symbol here to go into symbol editing mode, and now I can edit my ship. You can see here I'm no longer in scene one, I'm in MC Ship here. I'm going to add a keyframe right here on the second frame, insert keyframe, right click, and for this keyframe what I want to do is I want to zoom in, so I'll zoom in once, and then I'm going to get my line tool and I'm going to draw the thrust coming off of the back of the ship. Okay, so there's the thrust coming off. So now on keyframe one, there's no thrust. On keyframe two, there is thrust. Let's make a new layer here. And on this new layer, what I'll do is I'll put a stop action. And then I will copy the frame, notice I'm copying the frame here, and then pasting the frame. So now I have two stop actions, one on each frame. I'll go back to scene one, and now I'm ready to code up the ship. Now to do this, I'm going to select the keyframe here, open the action window, and once again, I've already copied and pasted the code I'm going to work on in this video at the bottom here, and I've commented it out so that it's grayed out and it's not functioning, and we'll just go through it one step at a time. All right, I'll start by pasting two function calls. And you can see here, I'm starting with a stop action or stop function. That's going to stop the playhead on the frame. Now we only have one frame at the moment, but eventually we'll have more than one keyframe and we'll need to stop the playhead when we get to the game screen. Okay, and the second line is a call to call a function named init which is short for initialize. Now I'm calling this function, but there is no built-in init function in Flash. We need to write that function. So I'll go two lines down and I'll say function init open and close parentheses, open curly brace, and then a closed curly brace. Now this function init will be our initialization function that will basically start up the game. So let's copy and paste some things that need to go in there. We'll start by pasting in some variables that we're going to put in there. So I'll paste these in here. All right, we have a score variable set to zero, a lives variable set to three, max ast, which is set to three. This will be for asteroids. Our ship dead variable, which is set to false because we're going to start off with our ship alive. And then these variables here are basically bounding box variables for our stage. So the left side of the screen, the stage or the game screen, the left side of the screen is at pixel zero, the top of the screen is at pixel zero, but the bottom and the right are set to whatever the game's uh, height is and whatever the game stage's width is. Notice how S is capitalized here, turns blue, so our width of our stage is 550 pixels, so the right side is equal to 550, and the bottom will be equal to 400 because the height of our Flash movie is set to 400. If I click on the screen here, let's see here, the stage, you can see the size 550 by 400. So that effectively, if we decide we want to change the size of our game by putting in this characteristic, the bottom and right variable will change according to whatever we set the stage to. So that's pretty handy. The next thing we're going to do is call a ship init function which will initialize just the ship. And so a ship init with a capital I, open and close parentheses in the semicolon. Now we haven't written this function yet, so once again when we call this function of course we need to write the function. So I'll go two lines down and I'll say function space ship init open and close parentheses open curly brace and then a closed curly brace. Now I'll go down to my commented out code and we'll see what needs to go in there. Alright, we'll start off with this very important line right here. So what we'll do in the ship init function when this gets called we will attach the movie ship from our library 
there's our movie clip, the linkage identifier was set to ship. We'll give it the new name, ship underscore MC, and then we'll set the depth level to two. So this should attach our ship movie clip from the library to the stage. Let's see if it works. We'll hit control enter. In the upper left hand corner, it's hard to see, there is the ship that's been attached to the stage in the upper left hand corner. Now the next two lines, will set it to the middle of the stage. So I'll copy these and then paste them in here. And you can see now the new name of the ship once it's attached to the stage is ship underscore MC. So I then say ship underscore MC dot underscore X, it's X property, and then it's Y property, and set it to the right variable divided by two. The right variable is equal to 550, so that'll be 275, and then the bottom divided by 2, which will be 400 divided by 2, which will be 200. And now, if I hit Control Enter, you can see the ship has been attached from the library and placed in the center of the stage. So the next thing we're going to do is add two custom properties to our ship underscore MC, which is basically our spaceship. And so what I'll do is I'll paste those in. I've already copied them from below. And you can see it's ship underscore MC dot vel x and dot vel y. Now this is short for velocity x and velocity y, and I've set them both equal to zero. Now these properties are custom properties that I've basically made up on the fly, kind of like uh, just uh, custom variables. You can see here that built-in properties for the movie clip are highlighted blue, like this underscore x property and this underscore y property. Those are properties for movie clips that are built into the ActionScript language. Whereas this velocity x and velocity y I've just made up and attached this property or this variable to the ship underscore movie clip. So then after that, the next thing that we're going to do is ship underscore mc dot on enter frame. We're going to give it an on enter frame handler which will basically enable the ship movie clip to call another function at the frame rate. And right now our frame rate is 65, 65 frames per second. So we'll say that ship underscore mc dot on enter frame equals control. And basically this will call a function named control 65 times per second. Then we'll finish with two additional variables that we'll put right here in this ship init function. We're going to make a variable rotate and set it equal to zero. And then another variable for thrust and set that equal to zero also. So there's our ship init function. We attach the ship to the stage with the attach movie function, capital M here. Then move it to the center of the stage set its velocity x and velocity y to zero. We're going to have the ship call a function called control at whatever the frame rate is because of this on enter frame handler. And it'll be effectively 65 times per second and then we set two additional variables. So if this ship is calling a function called control, notice there's no open and closed parentheses here, it just gets a semicolon. Then we need to write a function named control. So we'll go two lines down and type function control and then open and close parentheses and open curly brace and then once again the closed curly brace and it's time to write our control function. So this function is going to handle our ship controls and the first thing we'll do in the function we'll say is if then in all caps if ship dead equal equals double equal sign tests a double equal sign is a test so we say if ship dead equal equals false meaning the ship is not dead we haven't died and we can control the ship remember the ship dead variable starts off at false so once our game initializes ship dead will um, be false meaning we're alive Okay, so if ship dead equal equals false, and I'm going to put an open curly brace here, and then an end curly brace, and in between here, I'm going to put a bunch of space. This is where our controls will go. So if ship dead equal equals false, meaning the ship is alive, then 
we're going to do some keyboard controls. And I'll just paste in the first keyboard control. And it is if key, capital K, notice it turns blue, is down, capital D, then key dot left, and left has to all be in caps. Once again, there's a capital. And notice the parentheses. This is an open, and then the close over here, and then open and close here. So if we push the left arrow key on our keyboard, the rotate variable equals negative one. All right, and then we'll say else, space, and then paste. Else, if key is down, key, change that to right, then rotate equals one, the variable. And then we'll say else, an open curly brace and then a closed curly brace will say rotate equals zero and then a semicolon. Remove some of the spaces here and so if ship dead equals false and we press the left key rotates negative one, right key rotates equal to one, else rotate equals zero.